What up, it's your boy Nick from MMA Pixels here with Aaron LaForge. Aaron is a professional mixed martial artist, 2-0 as a pro, 4-0 as an amateur. How are you doing today, Aaron? Hi, good talking today. Doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing good. I noticed your last fight was in September, and for King of the Cage, you had a KO victory. Can you talk me through that? Yes, um, you know, it was a great fight. Um, going into the fight, I knew uh, this guy had, had a lot of Muay Thai experience, 16-4, and professional Muay Thai in Europe. And uh, I knew he was going to come out on his feet aggressive and come out in the first round pretty aggressive. So, you know, we just moved a lot and, you know, just was able to get it to the ground using our hands and get it to the ground and kind of beat him up on the ground and where they stopped in the second round. But uh, the, it went well overall. I executed the game plan and um, a very tough fighter on his feet. Um, it was a great experience for me fighting a guy like that. It's very, very good at Muay Thai, very um, a professional Muay Thai, you know, not just amateur, and, but 64 is a professional Muay Thai fighter and, um, I had to do my homework on him. Kind of had to watch him. He had, he has a few fights in, in, in MMA, and but he fought a lot of good guys in MMA. Very experienced guys. So I knew this was actually going to be a tough fight, and um, it went well. It, it was a tough fight, but it went well. It was in our favor, my team's favor, and that was a, a good thing. You have a very strong wrestling base that obviously was key to the victory. Yes. Um, yeah, it was. You know, I was able to, you know, land a lot of elbows in his guard and, and you know, cut him and, and really, you know, open the fight up. And uh, I do have a wrestling background. I was an All-American in junior college and then and also twice an All-American. After that, my senior year, I finished second at the national, our national tournament after wrestling in Oklahoma. So that was a great experience. And, you know, Oklahoma is a huge wrestling state, you know, regardless of, you know, school or division. Those are really big fans of wrestling over there they you know they love wrestling so and you know many many great wrestlers come out of that state in college so it's it's a it's a you know it's a great place to go to college to wrestle so it was uh, it's helped me in mma and uh um i it's it's been great it was a great experience and you know it's helped me going forward so while you were competing in wrestling did you know that you were gonna start mixed martial arts I actually did. That, that's a question I actually get often, and uh, a lot of people have asked me that. But I actually did. I, I would say when I was 17, I started, 17, 18 years old, I started boxing. Um, so I've been boxing for quite some time, and, and I'm very comfortable on my feet, very comfortable on the ground. So, you know, up every summer after wrestling season, you know, especially when I was wrestling out of state, I'd come home, get right in the boxing gym, box all summer. You know, while wrestling, while keeping up my wrestling. So this is something I've been wanting to do for a while. And I knew eventually after um, wrestling in college, I was, you know, going to either be a coach or, you know, fight or, you know, both. So I definitely had an idea of what, you know, what I was getting myself into. So what's training like these days? Um, it's great. Very, very busy. I train two, sometimes three times a day. I, you know, I train with some great guys. I've uh, trained with, I've trained with, um, you know, very good stand-up fighters, very good boxers, professional boxers. Um, I've trained with, um, you know, Chad George, actually, for my for my last fight. He's a black belt. He's fought on Bellator. He's fought in the WEC. So he's, you know, he's been a huge help for me. And, you know, also I've trained with a guy named Hector Ramirez. He's, uh, he's, um, he's fought in the UFC. He's fought Forrest Griffin. He's fought Rashad Evans. So a lot of knowledge around me, and it's, it's great to have people like that in, around you in, in your life. So, I, you know, I have great training partners, too. A lot of guys are active and up and coming, just like I am. So it's it's, it's always great to, to have that around you in your camp. I saw a while back on your social media, you're campaigning for a, a fight with Jose Torres, the Titan Fighting Championship 125 and 135 champion. You still interested in that fight? Always. Absolutely. I would love to fight him. I, I wrestled him in college my junior year and it was I completely in in the sense of a wrestling match I dominated the wrestling match it was he I beat him 9 to 2 and for the people that know wrestling know that's that's a large margin of victory and I, I was never in danger I you know and actually the funny story is you know I beat him I really didn't know who he was he was actually 
an active fighter as well. I guess he would fight, you know, after his wrestling season. He was he was already a known MMA fighter. I had no idea. And I continued on with my wrestling season, continued on. And I finished wrestling, and I noticed something came up. And I, you know, had a picture of him and his name. And I was like, wow, that could be the same guy. I looked it up. Sure enough, it was. And, you know, it. I, I would always, I would love to, to fight him again. I just think mentally I'm tougher. Obviously, my wrestling is better than his. I've watched him fight, and when he gets in trouble on his feet, he likes to take down uh, guys, and I don't think he could take me down. I And I'm very comfortable on my feet with him. You know, he's he, he's got Muay Thai experience, but, you know, I just fought a guy that was 16-4 and four in Muay Thai as a professional. So, I mean, I... I would feel I feel very comfortable right now with the people I train with right now. I, I, you know, I, you know, I got sparred with Chad George, who's 19 and, you know, seven as a professional, and he's fought in Bellator, fought in the WEC, and you know, Chad's a, a, a great mentor to me, and he's been a great mentor to me, and I, I got guys like Hector, and I would, I would definitely be prepared for Jose Torres, and you know, unfortunately. He really didn't want to fight right now because I know it's a high risk, low reward type fight. He's further along in his career than I am, and uh, I'm more coming up still. But in the future, I could see that fight definitely happening. I mean, you just continue to win. I'm excited for it. Uh, if it was to happen, Jose is on a 19 fight win streak. Uh, you're also right. undefeated. It would be on Titan fighting. It's on a uh, UFC Fight Pass. So I'd be able to watch it live. Right. Right, that that would be it. Would be awesome, and I, I, you know, I try to make the fight happen on my end. And unfortunately, he he actually fought a guy that was seven and two when when I was trying to get the fight, and you know, so I mean, the the guy he fought, you know, was, was very tough, and and it, you know, I I just think, like I said before, it was a, a low risk high, or a, it's a low reward high risk fight for him. You know, he's for the, he's already been fighting on UFC Fight Pass, so. And the last thing you see, they're they're actually he's the twenty five and thirty five pound champion. He's they're calling him the next Conor McGregor, and it's kind of you know I'm like wow, I, I would love to to fight him. You know I, we have some history, so um, I think it would be a great fight. You know either way, it'd be great for fight fans like yourself, and I think people would be very entertained by it. Right. So it doesn't look like you're going to get that fight anytime soon. When would you like to fight next? Um. May it's looking like May. Um, it's looking like May. Um, we're actually our last scheduled fight was supposed to be for Bellator. It fell through, unfortunately. So we're looking at May. I don't know if it it, it probably will not be for Bellator this time around, but it'll be for a different organization. But we're looking to get in there, you know, in May. And you know, I've been doing a lot of training, getting better, and it's it's been great. I'm looking forward to uh, to May. Why did the uh, Bellator deal fall through? Um, actually, it was scheduled. I actually did have an opponent, and uh, it was set. It was supposed to be at the forum, the one that actually just passed, or the one here in California, in Los Angeles. And uh, my opponent pulled out three, three, four weeks, you know, during my fight camp, and you know that was that. I did not get a replacement opponent. It, it is what it is, I guess you could say. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of sucks. I'm sure you sold a lot of tickets. Yeah, well, actually, they it was. I was waiting for confirmation from him, and he actually they said he turned down the fight three, three, four weeks. You know, three and a half weeks outside of the fight. So I initially never. It, technically, we agreed to it, and I agreed to it on my end. So I was training, and uh, it never felt it never came to fruition. So. So who are some of your biggest supporters? My biggest supporters would be actually one of my boxing coaches. I, I've known him for years. He's, I've known him since I was a you know a teenager, so since I was a high school kid. It's, he's still my boxing coach today, which is pretty pretty awesome. And his name is Dale Roy, Roybal, and he supported me from day one. And, you know, I, I've got some knockouts on my records, and he's helped me with, with that. And he's... He's a great coach, very knowledgeable, studies the sport of boxing, sport of MMA. So one thing is great with him is he's evolved his boxing for MMA. He knows there's kicks. He knows, you know, certain places where, you know, where boxing and, and MMA mix. So 
he studied the sport and he's helped me a lot. He's supported me uh, 110 percent. So I, I'm happy to have him on board. He's basically like family to me. Um, another supporter I would say is uh, my brother. I have a I have a brother. I have my two I got two brothers who are very supportive. They're not MMA fighters, but they've always supported me and they've always believed in me, which is uh, which is great and. And uh, I'm very happy and, and thankful to have them in my life. So, but I would say those. I mean, off the top of my head, there's I'm, you know there's some few people out there that have supported me very much. Hector Ramirez, you know, and a guy named you know Hector Ramirez, Chad George, and uh, my manager Mel, who's uh, he's an awesome guy. So I thank all of them. Where can the fans connect with you on social media? They can find me at. Aaron, and then L-A underscore F-A-R-G-E, which is my last name, at, on Instagram. And then um, also kind of just started a, a Twitter so that they could also find me there. It's it's Aaron underscore, and then my last name is L-A F-A-R-G-E. And, uh, yeah, those are the two two uh, social media outlets that I really use. So if anybody wants to contact or for any information, then you could get a hold of me there. Make sure you give Aaron a follow. Thank you for your time. Aaron Lafarge, 2-0, looking to go 3-0 and sometime in May. Be on the lookout. Thanks for watching. Your support helps the channel grow. Please subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, drop a comment below, and I'll get back to you.